Welcome back to my deep dive series, which we do every summer as we take a look at each and every NFL team, come up with a realistic prediction on how that team will do. And then at the end of the series, we do a 2023 NFL mock draft. And again, I do these videos come out based on how I think the draft order will be. These aren't actual power rankings, but I think the Falcons, which yes, this is what this video is on. We'll be picking second overall. It's not necessarily because I think they're a bad team. I think there's a lot of good to be had if you are a Falcons fan. It's just you might have to wait because at significant positions of value, they're just a bit lackluster. So without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's get into the depth chart, the roster, and let's talk about it. And we're going to be starting with the offense, the OC there being Dave Ragon, who really, let's be honest, this is Arthur Smith's offense. This is his offense is why Ragon is here because he's going to run Arthur Smith's offense. And when it comes to Arthur, Arthur Smith's offense, it's it's very important to establish the run game in this offense to set up play action. And it just didn't go as planned last year when it came to that. The run game wasn't that effective because the offensive line wasn't that effective. We'll get to them in a minute but last, last season they were a very zone heavy blocking scheme that kind of that, that shanahan wide zone blocking scheme but with arthur smith he likes to incorporate a lot of uh duos and um wham runs uh when he was back at tennessee he liked to bring in uh runs like that because you had a power back like derrick henry you want to take advantage of that he doesn't have the luxury of that here at atlanta and looking at the depth at wide receiver this is the, they knew it was bad they knew it was bad so much so that they went out and grabbed brian edwards they went out and drafted drake london and this team it still wants to play they, for the most part they're a 12 personnel team 80% of the time they were running either 12 or 11 personnel. You'd be like, well, well, hold up 11. That's three, three wide receivers. Take into account how they used Kyle Pitts. To be fair, they used Kyle Pitts the way you should use Kyle Pitts because he'd kick out in the slot. He'd kick out out wide a lot of the time. I, he was second among tight ends in snaps in the slot and on the outside. Second only two. Travis Kelsey, who's arguably the best tight end in all of football. But they did a good job utilizing Smith last year as they got better uh, as the season went on, using him in a more versatile manner, which is very good. And now they bring in um, like an Anthony uh, Ferkser, uh, who I butchered the last name. That's that's literally what Broshma does. He butchers last names. I can't pronounce crap worth worth anything is what it is you know who i'm talking about who someone who is familiar with back at tennessee who's this good um this good uh tight end to in line step back tight end type of guy but a guy who's also familiar with their scheme now this offense can have a lot of success it's i think first off it's going to come down to the offensive line mainly some of these young guys that they have on the offensive line stepping up mainly a jalen mayfield who was god awful last year in his rookie season there at left guard i think that's why they bring in justin schaefer out of georgia but again it's a six round pick i mean I, how how much fire is he gonna really bring to to the butt of jalen mayfield Considering how bad he was, I think actually quite a bit. I really do. But you also want to see guys like Matt Hennessy step up. Uh, that's the, they drafted just a year before. Uh, Drew Dahlman out of Stanford, who's a very similarly built tight or not tight end center there. Uh, and Caleb Mc, McGarry just doesn't look like things are working out for him. But like you, you, it has to. It has to. What you gonna you gonna put a Fetty there? No, you're gonna move Jalen Mayfield, who played right tackle uh for michigan they're like no, <laughs> no you don't want that to happen but you won't need these guys to step up if this team is going to be effective and i kind of brought up how they like to run like uh 12 personnel some 11 they ran 11 personnel i think like 30 uh, like 31 percent of the time but also they were kicking not just kyle pitts but guys like 
Cordell Patterson, who, yeah, he's listed as running back, but he's a cat that can literally, former wide receiver, is used in that regard as well. So it's like, yeah, it's more so feels like a 12 personnel, but you're really hoping for the offensive line to step up because you got Matthews. He's good. You got Lindstrom. He's good. I'm flabbergasted. I'm, I'm, I, I don't have words for it because like a guy like Elijah Wilkinson, he's, he's more of this depth guy. You don't want him starting. You don't. So it's like McGarry, you, he needs to step up. You got uh, Hennessy, he needs to step up. But I mean, you got Dolman there. You know who, like in the uh, few appearances we saw from him uh, last year, I actually thought was relatively all right. Uh, how many snaps did he actually specifically play last year? Uh, a little more than 50. Uh, but still, I mean, it's a guy that could definitely put uh, Hennessy's uh, butt to the fire. I don't know why I keep coming back to that metaphor. It's a good metaphor, though. Uh, but you got Pitts. You got Fersker. Uh, I think uh, a guy that I was surprised got drafted was john fitzpatrick who's more of a blocking tight end that's why i actually think he's a guy that can make the roster just because of that regard but let, let's talk a little bit about what they have in terms of weapons because brian edwards they bring him in they bring in drake london you're like where's the speed where be the speed and they got it in zakai uh Zacchaeus. he's a bit undersized but Dude's fast, and he played extremely well last year. I expect him to be on the field quite a bit. They also bring on Tate, who's, I think, a fine like wide receiver for. He was for the uh, Bengals. You know, just, just a cat that uh, I think will I think will at least challenge Zacchaeus because he does have some size limitations. But outside of that, like you got you got Bird, who's really a journeyman at this point. Frank Darby, you're hoping he, he takes the next step. He's a good, he, he's a very good athlete, but can he be how he was utilized there at uh, ASU? Like he was just a guy that was like, all right, we're going to put the ball in your hands, do something with it, or just go vertical and make a catch. Is he is he going to be someone that's more of this complete wide receiver? They bring in uh, Geronimo. Geronimo! I don't know why I said it that way, but bringing him, I, I'd be surprised if he makes a roster. I think Loki, a, a guy I really like that they uh, brought in via – UDFA is Stanley Brad or Stanley Berryhill. Actually, a guy I actually know personally. Uh, he again another undersized slot guy with recurrent return capabilities, but he's very good after the catch. But he's more he's very more the same of what they have in Zacchaeus. He's probably more going to be maybe a practice squad guy. So it's not looking good. I mean, really, the mainstay you're going to be seeing your receivers are going to be the. I think it's going to be the likes of Brian Edwards, Drake London. Kyle Pitts and Cordell Patterson. There you go, everybody. So, uh, go and Marcus Mario. He's gonna get his 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 second shot to be a starting quarterback. They also bring in Desmond Ritter, who was actually someone I I t I liked further down the like the draft process. Didn't really like him initially. Then kind of warmed to him later on. Who's? It's funny because my comp for Ritter was Mariota. So, do I think the franchise quarterback's on the squad? No, I don't think so. But got Mariota, and I mean, th I think this offense is going to be geared towards, like, I don't really see how they're going to be able to attack the field vertically. Like, Drake London's great. He's a good contest to catch guy, but you really want to get the ball in this guy's hands quick because he's a smooth athlete, and he could create after the catch. Like, he was leading all of college football in – in uh force missed tackles at receiver and he only played the first eight weeks then he got had the ankle injury so i think they're gonna i think teams are really gonna be able to basically stack the box they're gonna bring their guys in and it the offense i think the offense it's, it's just not gonna be as potent it's gonna look a lot different without matt ryan like this is why I, I talked about earlier in the video it was like hey quarterback valuable positions you're kind of you, you're kind of at a loss at them right now but the i think the future is bright there there are there are building blocks there if you're able to get someone to be a a true 
compliment to a Drake London. I don't think they have that guy on the roster yet. Uh, I don't think they have a franchise quarterback on the roster yet. I know some of y'all will be like, Desmond Ritter, we got him in the third round. Okay, he's a third round pick. You're kind of hoping and praying. Not, not to say Desmond Ritter is a bad prospect. He wasn't. He, he's a cat that can be wildly inaccurate at times, but he does have an arm that's capable of special throws. Uh, you have to take in consider this consideration that this guy can gain yards with his legs. He can do that. Uh, you virtually could say the same thing about Marcus Mariota, though I, he doesn't have. I don't think he has a special arm like Ritter does, or at least what Ritter's capable of. But I think Mario could do a efficient job of leading this offense. Uh, efficient enough, I suppose. But when it comes to the running back, because again, this is a team that wants to get the running game started. They're going to use Cordell Patterson, who's going to be the other guy that they kind of mix up in that um, to basically be the one-two punch, I suppose. Because again, Patterson's more of this this player you want to use in a versatile manner it's going to be uh, like a they list damian williams here i think tyler algier at a byu he kind of brings the smash mouth to this offense that they didn't really have in um mike uh, mike davis last year so like watch out for him i think he could be a, a contributor like damian williams is fine and all but like I really think he's more of a, a committee back here. I think I think we could I think we could see a lot of Algier this year. I'm actually pretty excited about that. Uh, outside of that, there's really nothing at running back to speak of. It's really those three guys and everyone else. If they keep a fourth guy, whatever, it's fine, I guess. Um, I doubt that they will though. They really might just go in with those three guys. Keep Keith Smith. You got Furser, who's this very uh, versatile tight end. Could also be H back. So, yeah, the offense. It's kind of. It kind of is what it is. But let's talk about the defense because I actually really like what this defense is starting to do uh, under Dean Pease. I guess we could talk about the scheme quite a bit, but it's kind of weird with Dean Pease because um, he's kind of started to move away what we from what we've known him to do recently like dean pease is known to be bringing this blitz heavy package he loves his cover ones he loves his cover zeros he likes putting his corners on an island being like hey yo we're gonna be bringing the rush the pass is gonna have to come out fast be ready but he didn't really do that last year last year he was more so stressed into his secondary hey know your role and be familiar with with these with concepts of zone coverage and the dude played a hell lot of zone last year he played a lot of actually your standard cover too and then what we have seen at least recently from dmp is keep in mind this guy's been in the league for a hell of a long time so like he's adaptable he's versatile he he's gone through the ringer he know he he he's not just this oh this is traditionally what he does like it's recently yes that's what he's done but he's moved away from that at least what he did last year and also keep in mind this he said last year he only opened up about 60 percent of the playbook but let's keep talking coverage because yeah i think we're gonna keep seeing more zone heavy uh coverage especially with the addition of a uh, casey hayward who primarily for his whole career has been a very very good zone corner and of course you got aj terrell who just enjoyed his the best season well, to be fair he's played what all of maybe all of two seasons but yeah what arguably should have been a pro baller last year that's why i don't put any stock in well this guy has this many pro balls the pro ball is a joke everyone knows it calm down calm down but aj terrell arguably probably one of the best corners of last season it's really going to be about can this team create pressure because they sucked at Atlanta. They have been bad at getting pressure to the quarterback in a while, and that's why I expected them to be a bit more blitz happy than they actually were last year. They're actually pretty middle of the pack. I think they blitzed on about 25% of their plays last year in terms of pressure rate. They were the lowest. They were the worst team in the NFL. They were second in their hurry rate. Like, it, this it, it this did not look like a Dean P's defense, at least what we've seen recently of where he was at with the Titans and the Ravens. So 
it did look a bit different, but also in the offseason, they emphasized pass rush. They brought in Lorenzo Carter. They drafted Arnold Abichetti, uh D'Angelo Malone. They focused on getting more speed in that front seven with Troy Anderson. I do expect this defense to be a bit better, but to be fair, that's not saying much because the bar was set so low after last season. I guess we could kind of get into the nitty gritty of this defense. And Grady Jarrett, they still have a all pro whatever you want to call it player a caliber player there in grady jarrett who's been having to do it all by himself get this man some help now they list marlon davidson who unfortunately was a guy that i actually really liked during the draft process uh real athletic guy but hasn't really shown much, if anything, uh, Taquan um, Graham will probably be the guy they turn to. As I think he actually saw more snaps last year than Davidson did. Uh, oh, yeah, Graham. Oh, here, let me put this on. Graham saw... Oh, I don't even see him. Okay, so Marlon Davidson saw 270 to Graham's 309. So, yes, Graham saw more snaps. I actually expect Graham to be the starter. We'll get to projected starters uh, in, in a few minutes. But when it comes to the rest of the depth on this line, uh, they got like Vincent Taylor, who's been a very fine depth option over the course of his career. Uh, you got Anthony Rush, who's really just this nose tackle that they have. Uh, they bring in uh, UDFA that I actually really liked out of Penn State and Derek Tangello. Uh, does he make the roster, though? It's like, uh, maybe, maybe, but they're really, I think they're really going to be expecting, hey, this pass rush has to take a big step up because of the guys we brought in in a Lorenzo Carter, who is this ath uber athletic uh, edge who just, who's who had some bright spots for the Giants, but for the most part, kind of has been a kind of was a letdown in New York. Arnold Abichetti, who was a who was a phenomenal prospect out of Penn State, I was pretty high on Arnold Abichetti. I kind of saw him as this uh, fringe first round pick. They bring in um, D'Angelo Malone, who is this more DPR like designated pass rush only? Who they'll probably try to also get involved in coverage. You saw that at the Senior Bowl with him. They also actually bring in um, another guy who probably more of a special teamer at a Cal in um, Dang, who Ed Cal worked off the edge, but also worked a lot in coverage there with him and uh, Cameron Good. But a, a guy that might be lucky to make the roster. Uh, and then, of course, another guy that I actually liked out of Notre Dame as a day three guy uh, in, was it, Ogan Denji, who lots of length, didn't show too much last year. Actually saw significant playing time last year, but didn't show too much. Only had 11 pressures and a sack. So a guy that's probably you'd much rather in the rotation than actually having to depend upon. So... Will we see good pass rush from this squad? I doubt it. This is still a very questionable unit when it comes to that. But they have some pieces there to be encouraged about. Going to linebacker, I think the big question right now at linebacker is Deion Jones. Is, is he going to be with the team? He's hurt. He's gonna. He's not going to partake in any of the offseason uh, practices. Uh, he's already been, was rumored to be a, that could, a guy that could be traded or be a post june first cut so we're still weighing word on that so don't know if we even expect him to play for atlanta this year they brought in rashad evans who for all intents and purposes a first round bust but a guy that that um arthur smith uh, was familiar with in tennessee more of a run stuffer but even at that he hasn't been great over the last couple of years uh, the guy, a uh, guy that I really like, and Michael Walker, dude. The I don't know how much of a jump we see him take this year. Is he only play? He played a little less than 200 snaps, and he was he was good for 16 games last year. So I, I expect to see more of him. Be fair, he, they had a guy like uh, Foya Luakun, who was hella good last year for him. But Troy Anderson, I expect to be. 
to be the guy to fill in if Jones goes. Because I, I expect Evans to be on the field a lot. Like just just because he's a run stuffer, they're gonna want him, want him there, and just his his history with Arthur Smith. I think he's gonna probably be the other, uh, other linebacker that's gonna get a heap of these um, snaps, heap of playing time. And I think it's the next one. It's going to be, I think it's Troy Anderson. If Jones ends up not playing for the Falcons, it's going to be Anderson. And there's going to be, there is going to be, there's going to be a learning curve when it comes to Troy Anderson. This guy's played linebacker for like a year and a half. Uh, back at Montana State, they they had a, they had a, they canceled the 2020 season. So, and he was a guy that was converting to linebacker. He was like their wildcat quarterback, played fullback, running back, you know, all sorts of things on offense. It was making them convert to linebacker there at Montana State. But he's got uber uber potential. So, linebacker, I'm a bit eh, with. And you got Nick K. Uh, Kawa Kawaski. I'm terrible with names. I'm terrible. Y'all should already know this. If you're not new, to, if you're not new to the channel, by the way, I'm terrible with names. But uh, guy that's kind of a journeyman at this point in his career, coming from uh the Raiders, where actually I thought he had a pretty successful tenure. Just didn't see a lot of or playing time last year, which I thought was kind of weird because they weren't that good at linebacker. But uh, all, uh, another cat that was actually good at Chicago a couple of years ago. So. They, they they really don't have much there and you gotta expect if anderson's gonna be seeing a lot of snaps there's gonna be that learning curve but he is an uber athlete and then going to the secondary it's aj terrell and casey hayward as long as he stays healthy and then what and then what sway darren hall oh freaking boy mike ford no thank you Zay Oliver, he was playing in the slot last year, but he got banged up. I think he only played like four games. Uh, but he he was all right, but but still, I, I really think that's a role. I think we might end up seeing more three safety sets. Uh, to be fair, they played Richie Grant a lot in the slot last year because Oliver got hurt. So I think we if, if anything, I think Richie Grant takes over in the slot maybe because I really think the starters are going to end up being um, Eric Harris, who was safety that saw the second most snaps last season and then i really think they like what they got in jalen hawkinson was a guy i was really high on coming out of cal talking about cal a lot in this video interesting but uh they also got uh dean marlowe but i i think he's probably more of this depth slash special team player there but yeah it's like there's a lot of if ands and maybes when it comes to coverage and a lot of oh sh oh golly gee i hope things work out golly gee oh boy g willigers like th there's a lot of good young talent i mean shoot i mean <laughs> they bring over Corey uh ballenstein who actually i thought he was okay there for the giants that's that's good depth but that's a guy you don't want started uh there's matt hankins who I don't know how long he's gonna be in the NFL running at what four, it was like a four seven something like Sorry at corner that ain't gonna cut it. You're gonna end up moving to safety at least you're gonna have to but he was a very disciplined Corner there playing for Iowa. You kind of have to be so It's just, I'm sorry. There's just not a lot to be encouraged about you're hoping the pass rush takes this big step up and it looked like it looks like it should but again you're relying on a rookie you're not lying on a former day two pick in lorenzo carter to step up opposed to what you saw from him with the giants you you got you got some dpr guys in malone uh you're if jones can't go a guy who's already been kind of in a decline in his career like anderson another rookie you're gonna rely on you're gonna hope that someone could stick next to grady step up in that regard whether it is maybe davidson maybe he finally hits this year maybe it i don't know it works out or graham who was a fifth rounder. i think when he came out i had like a late day three grade on him anyway so i'm not too high on but honestly as long as he's a good run stuffer i don't think it really matters but yeah, no, nah, I, I got a few if, ands, and buts. I guess let's go ahead and get to my projected stars. So when we do projected stars, I don't go based on like your your base defenses. I go based on who's going to see the most amount of snaps. That's what I care about. Who's going to be on the field the most. That's going to dictate how good the team does. 
So let's go ahead and look at the offense first. Of course, I got Marcus Mariota. You don't want to rush a rookie quarterback out there. You really just don't. So I I got Mariota taking a bulk of the snaps this year post uh, Ritter. Uh, Patterson, just with how versatile he's gonna, he is, he, I think he's just going to be on the field a ton post to anyone else that they have there at running back. Drake London. Brian Edwards. Uh, again, I got uh, Zacchaeus here because Auditates, again, more of this this uh, wide receiver four that they have. And then they're bringing back the same starters on the O-line and hoping some guys take some jumps. Hoping that they play a hell of a lot better because mm, they need to. So you got Jake Matthews, Jalen Mayfield, Matt Hennessy, Chris Lindstrom, and Caleb McGarry. And then going to the defense, Arnold Ebiketti, Lorenzo Carter. I really can't see who, who will get more playing time ahead of those guys. Like, Ogundenji, unless he radically steps up in production, I don't see him seeing the field a ton. Uh, D'Angelo Malone, but again, he's a DPR guy in my eyes. And then I have, I got Grady Jarrett. I got Taquan Graham. And then a linebacker, I'm just going to assume that Deion Jones is not playing this, or at least not playing for the Falcons this season. It really just, all arrows point to him not doing that. So I got Troy Anderson. I got Rashawn Evans, though. Again, I like Michael Walker better. It's just given Evans, he has history with Arthur Smith, and he's probably going to be the I say probably the better run stuffer, but he really hasn't even been good in that regard. But I assume he'll be the guy taking that. I list, I well, I got okay. I got Ag Terrell, Casey Hayward. Yeah, no, those guys are the starters there on the outside. And then I list Richie Grant. I say slot, more so safety. I I really think he's gonna see more snaps than Isaiah Oliver, and then Jalen Hawkins and Eric. Harris. So, without further ado, I guess let's go ahead. Let's get to this. Uh, how how I think this team's gonna do? Let's switch on over, and I got them in a nice, healthy four and thirteen. And I know no one's gonna like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I mean, I, I had to project for all these teams going through Atlanta. They got. It's just their defense. I just don't see them being this consistent. Like they're gonna. Be stopping guys. They open up against the Saints, who they they've they've invested a lot into this offense. Like this team, think the Saints think they're gonna, they're a Super Bowl team. I think I have them going 50-50 with the Saints though. Uh, then you get the Rams, which is rough. But hey, I got a win here in care or in um in Seattle. Sorry, Seattle fans, you were in the last video. Uh, the Cleveland Browns is the next game here. I'm assuming it's kind of hard to t project if Deshaun Watson sees a suspension. But even then, I think this team, they run the ball well enough against a team that I don't think is going to stop the run well. So then, I mean, dude, I mean, just looking at this, this Skeddy, I, I got y'all going 50 50 with the Panthers. Like, I know y'all are like, Sam Darnold, we ain't going to lose a Sam Darnold. Yo, calm down. <laughs> calm down. Y'all really might. <laughs> uh, but Chargers, Bengals, like, uh, I got, I mean, I got a few wins here for y'all, like, against Wall, or, no, no, I don't even have y'all being Wall. I got y'all being the Bears. You beat out Justin Fields. I'm a big Justin Fields fan, too. But this is kind of a tough schedule. I mean, you get to, you have to face the Saints and the Bucks twice a year. You're going to be facing the Rams, the Cardinals, and this is Cardinals with D-Hop. And I know the Cardinals are typically a, te a, a worse team near the end of the season. But I think that's still going to be troublesome. The, the Ravens, as long as they stay healthy. Uh, and, like, this Washington team, this Washington team ain't bad. Like, I honestly can't wait to get to this deep dive because I really think they're just held back by the coaching staff, which I don't think a lot of Washington fans will like because a lot of people love Ron Rivera, and I love Ron Rivera too. It's just I don't really like what he has in terms of his coordinators. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, hey, against winning teams, 1-9. Against losing teams, you're almost 500. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. That 
It's not bad. You went you're three and six at home. Uh, like, what do I think the ceiling? I uh, like honestly ceiling for this team probably like seven wins. But I mean, y'all were seven wins last year with Matt Ryan, so it's like, do I think this is a team that that's better without Matt Ryan? I really don't think so. I really, really don't think so. So. Yeah, I mean, hey, I think there's a lot to be encouraged about if this team ends up again. I'm I always say this in my deep dives. If this team ends up these team. There's gonna be teams that end up doing better than I anticipate, and I don't mind taking the L. I really don't. I really don't. I really don't mind taking the L. Actually, check this out real quick. I don't mind taking the L so much that I've already prepared this giant L for me just in case i got this giant l i'm ready to take it i'm ready to take the l i just really don't think i'm gonna be taking the l when it comes to the falcons sorry not sorry hopefully you like the channel if not hey my bad my bad i'm sorry falcons fans i'm sorry but I, th I do think there is promise there. It really depends on how the offensive line steps up. Uh, let's go ahead and switch back to this sucker. Uh, depends how the offensive line steps up. I'm not too confident in that. I think you really maybe have like, maybe I think Hennessy probably has the best shot at uh, actually like, I think taking that next step compared to uh, Mayfield, who was a prospect I didn't even like. And uh, McGarry, who's kind of already proven he's bad. So like, you don't really there's not really a lot of speed on offense like or at least a receiver i mean you got zadeus and that's about it or zacharias i keep saying zadeus zacharias or zacchaeus there we go horrible with names dude but uh yeah join me tomorrow for our next deep dive don't worry i think this is when we get into the afc so till next time you be easy my friends later